Dallas is going to sing the introduction. You can follow along if you want to, but it's, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> used to talk about how I wanted to change the world, but I always left it up for somebody else to do. Then I finally realized that I needed to Hospitality hosts are Laura, Mary Ellen, and Anne. And of course, we are all spick and span angels because we all have something great to help make it clean and up easier. And Linda is our, uh, our given a really good talk today on, let's see, living in the now. Oh, couldn't we all use a little message on how to do that better? <laughs> I know I can. And of course, getting everything on our screens and getting the mics and everything is our technology guru, Mark Swing. <laughs> I'm just wishing I could have, that was one of my creative things, but it's not. <laughs> And so uh, we will talk about the Red Heart Welcome after we hear our heart song. Okay. Okay. 
you to know no matter where you are on your journey of faith you are always welcome here we know that the world is a better place when we are willing to share our hearts we give you this red heart as a symbol of the steadfast spirit that lives within each of us and we ask you to carry this symbol as a member of the red heart fellowship let it be a reminder that the love of God is always with you and to share your heart wherever you go the red heart is a symbol of fellowship in the world. And we can spread love one heart at a time. So let's start the movement here. And for those uh, visiting or watching for the first time online, we ask that you continue to watch and hear the great messages. So I'm going to light the Christ candle and then we'll say our uh, mission statement and invocation.
going to have a brief time of uh, meet and greet and hugs. And remember that it will be brief because we will have our longer fellowship after service. loud very easy, but sometimes Linda's doesn't quite get loud enough, maybe, huh? All right. Yeah. 
have to work it out Just stay in the here and now All you gotta do is rest your mind for a while Sometimes deepest answers come When you're out there in fun Take your breath Close your eyes and smile Amazing, amazing You will do amazing things all that I give and receive. A classic unity hymn declares, love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. While it, it is true that freely sharing my time, talent, and treasure attracts good in my, into my life, I am inspired to give for the sheer joy of giving. Recognizing my oneness with all people in God, I know every thought, word, helping hand, or financial gift I offer blesses me as much as it blesses the one who receives it. Because I know that both giving and receiving are essential to the flow of abundance, I accept with gratitude and love the gifts and blessings that come to me through the loving generosity of others. I count each day as another opportunity for me to give in return. And from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18, they are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share. Today, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and receive. And God blesses us. <clears throat> So if any of you know the group Devotion, they did a song called I Am. We're going to do it a little bit differently today. So we're going to sing the first part through twice, I Am as God Created Me. And then we go into the O oh, I Am. And then you get to choose which one of those two parts you want to sing. It can be all the same, or you can kind of change it up if you want to. And Dallas is going to improvise on the you are beautiful, you are golden, and that good stuff. So we'll see how this works. This is an experiment for us. <laughs> so take a deep breath.
November the 10th, we will be having our annual congregational meeting following the service. And we will be approving the 2019-2020 budget and nominating new board members. And so if you are interested, we will have um, four openings on the board. So uh, if you are interested in becoming one of those important board members that help make great decisions, then see Cindy or any of the other board members. And uh, everyone is welcome, but only people that are uh, confirmed members will be allowed to vote. And uh, the invitations are being distributed. If you don't get one in by hand while you're at church, then you'll get one in the mail. And then on sun Saturday, December 14th, oh, I haven't been to a dance in a long time. And so I'm going to come to the holiday one we are having on December 14th for our holiday celebration dance. And Michael will be... Michael Gregory's band, Mad Dash. Yes, Michael Gregory's band, Mad Dash, will be playing. And I am looking forward to that. And if he wants to come and do a practice one, then I will be here. <laughs> and then... On Thursdays, we have our Course in Miracles from 7 to 8 with a um, love offering. And that's, now it's time for some more music. The special music. The um, addition to the other special music. <laughs>
looking for. talk today is about living in the now and I am reborn with each new day. Say that with me. I am reborn with each new day. Doesn't that feel good? Mm -hmm. I mean when we can think about that each day is a new day. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow hasn't come. We're right here in the now. What a wonderful feeling that is, huh? We don't have to relive and do the things we did yesterday. We can just step into something new. I'd like to put a shout out uh, to our friends on Facebook and my friends in California that check in and send me little notes during the week and say, I saw you on Sunday. It feels like you're right here with me. So I just wanted to put a shout out to them. How many of you believe that you're reborn each new day? Yeah, I think we all do. It said, you know, the moment of know that each morning is a new day. I do, and I'm living in the present moment. Yesterday's gone, tomorrow hasn't come, and I'm living in the moment, the present moment. You know, sometimes it's kind of hard to do. Sometimes, whoops, sometimes the sun doesn't come up in the morning. Sometimes we have a little bit of drizzle of rain, right? Every day I treat and I pray for rain. And today when I get up this morning and I saw the rain, a, little, a song reminded me of something I sung as a little child. Rain, rain, go away, come again another day. Rain, rain, go away, come again another day. Bring on the sunshine just for today. You know, if we could all do that, I think we'd have rain, I, we'd have sun every single day. <laughs> And people kind of laugh at me when I say that, but I said, no. They say, oh, it rains all the time in Washington. And I said, not over where I live. <laughs> I said, I get up in the morning with a little bit of haze over the water, and then in the far horizon, there's the sun coming. And so for me, every day is a new day. Every day is just incredibly awesome, better than the day before. This week I've been, I was in class, um, and some of you know, I'm doing three classes in a very, very short time, and plus I'm doing Sunday, and plus I'm doing the ministry and so forth, and checking in with people during the week. But what I learned that I didn't realize was in 1889, Filma and Myrtle started this movement. 1889. Now, if you can think back on 1889 to where we are today, there have been a lot of changes, right? A lot of changes have been made. And there'll be some changes happening in November. So hang on to your seat. There's something new is going to give birth here. 
You know, and, and the other thing I was thinking about was we turn on our TV, right? And we can change the channels. And then we can shut it off when we want, right? So if we change our way that we're looking at things, change is good. Now some people say to me, Linda, I don't want to change. I just want, I said, honey, don't change a thing about yourself. Just open the window of the door of your mind. That something new is going to give birth. Something new is going to happen. We're going to fill this room. We're going to grow the church. We're going to have more people coming in, young people. A lot of music, maybe a band, maybe something. I don't know where your consciousness is. But I know for me, when I think about the center and I think about each individual that is here with such a loving heart that has called me forth here to be and to teach and to help you grow, grow the center in a big way, I'm like, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm home. And you are home because this is a place where you can come every Sunday. You can greet new friends. You can socialize during the week. Last night I was invited over to Pismo, and I hope I'm saying that correctly, to the Yacht Club. And they had a Roaring Twenties. Paulsburg. Oh, Paulsburg. Okay. Anyway, I was invited to the Yacht Club last night. <laughs> Sometimes I mispronounce words, so please hang in there with me. But it was a Roaring Twenties. It was a speakeasy. Now, you should have seen the outfits. Oh, my God. They were absolutely fabulous. They took me way back to the movies I used to watch in the Roaring Twenties. And they were doing the can-can, and they were doing, were doing another one where I was, like, watching Fred Astaire on the screen, and I was watching them dancing. It was absolutely fabulous. I had so much fun. And it was a way of really relaxing and seeing people just enjoying life and not worrying about what was going on in the outside world. I think we need to do more of that, huh? I think we all need to have more fun in life. I know I do. So in Lessons of Truth, it says, It is through Christ, the indwelling Christ, that we are to receive all that good has and is, as much or as little as we can dare to claim. Dare to claim. I have faith we can grow and we have what and we have what you all want, a new home. And in the Bible, in Hebrew eleven it says, Faith is the insurance of things hoped for and for the convic conviction of things not seen. So maybe we don't see the church growing at this particular moment, but it is gonna grow. It is gonna grow. And we're going to have fun. And we're going to dance. And we're going to have, like, oh, I don't know, maybe some auctions, have some fundraising events, maybe have a, uh, maybe a, a tree of life. I don't know if you all know what a tree of life is. But it's a big tree, and it has lots of branches and bricks and something on it. And we started that when I was in California. And it's beautiful, because it goes on the wall. And I know when we get our own home, that it'll, it would be a permanent one. But you could buy a brick and put your name up there. You could put a loved one that may be left, and every time you walk in, they're there with you. Isn't that a nice feeling to have memory of somebody and for people, newcomers, to come to say, hey, I can put my name up there. I want to buy a brick. And before you know it, there's so much abundance coming into the center that we're like, whoa, we can do more things. Maybe we can do a food drive. We can support a local family in town, do Christmas time, adopt a family. You know, there's so many things that can be done with the universe, and I'm sure you all have great ideas, and I'd like to hear them. But we can do a lot to where everybody knows our name before we even say where we're from, what center we belong in. Because we are a center of love, of compassion, of joy, of giving. You know, when I, years ago, I used to always say, I'm on a fixed income. I'm on a fixed income. I can't afford to give more than I'm giving. And a minister friend of mine, uh, at the time I wasn't a minister, and he said to me, how's that working? I said, what do you mean, how's that working? 
He said, do you know you're stopping your, your prosperity in your life? And I said, what do you mean I'm stopping my prosperity? And he said, by saying you're on a fixed income, there's no more to come in. You're stopping your, you're stopping your prosperity to come into your life. And that was the beginning of my journey of what prosperity was. Because it's not all about the money, guys. Yeah, it's good to have. We can buy nice clothes and beautiful homes and drive cars. But it's more than that. It's energy. It's energy that runs through the universe. It's like Edison creating the light bulb. He did it, I don't know, 10,000 times before he hit the one light that went on. So when you think about that, and you think about the love and the energy, when I mail a letter, I think about the tree that grew, that created the letter, the stamp, the postman, the person that's delivering it. I mean, it's all energy. And when we start opening our consciousness to that, more comes in. More comes in. I've never been broke. I might have been a little short, but I've never been broke. And that's a good feeling. Because the blessings that we have, the clothes that we wear, the food that we eat, the places that we go, the cars that we drive, the people that we meet, that's all energy. And those people come into your life sometimes to teach us good lessons. Sometimes just to tell us, you're beautiful, you're handsome. Oh my God, I love your eyes. What was that? What was that saying that you said last week? It means so much to me. It meant so much. It really made me cry. That's energy. That's prosperity. But sometimes we look at things that it's all about the money. It's not always about the money. Sure, it's great to have. But there's more to come in life. There's more. Another truth is that the demand must be made before the supply can come forth to fill it. To recognize these statements of truth and to affirm them are the whole secrets of understanding. Faith based on principle. So if we say we're rich, we're loving, we're kind, we're happy, we're joyful, and we set those intentions every day, that's what shows up. But if we turn around and say, oh, I don't want to live another day. Well, guys, maybe that'll be your last breath. I don't know. But whatever works for you to be empowered, to be inspired, to be washed in the spirit of being reborn, by God, claim it. Because we're all here doing it, doing wonderful things in this earth. Faith takes hold of substance, the thing hoped for and brings into evidence um, versatility the things not seen. Years ago, I was married. I had two children. I was I married very young. And I was in an abusive relationship. And I thought that was the way. The church told me, you get married, you have babies, you obey your husband. And you make your bed, you lie in it. And I thought, oh, that's the way I'm supposed to do it, huh? And I'm a little, little hot redhead, and I wasn't going to go with that. But I got married, and I had two, I have two beautiful uh, boys. I have several grandchildren, a couple of great-grandchildren, because they started very young with their babies. So I'm young. I'm only 39 now. Remember that. <laughs> and... I was in that relationship for a long time. There were many a night I would hide under the crib. I'd hear him coming in the door because I was afraid he was going to beat the hell out of me again. But I had an angel sent to me. And she said, Linda, you have a choice. You don't have to stay in that relationship. I have a choice. I mean, I really have a choice. I can leave. And they said, yes. There's organizations that will help you through that. So I did. I said, no, no more. I'm done. I'm out of here. I didn't know where I was going to go. I had two babies, one little one, the other one was walking. And I left. But God took care of me. The church I belonged to brought food. They supplied turkeys at Thanksgiving and Christmas trees. 
I was taken care of. So you see, sometimes we go through things in life, and it's not about the tragedy or the experience that I went through, it's what I learned from that. It's who I am today. It made me a very strong woman. And I teach people that I meet along the way when they're in an abusive relationship. I teach them, you have a choice. So it's my gift to them as a gift was given to me. So see, the things that we learn in life, the languages that we can speak, the schools that we go to, the education that we have, we have that shiny example to teach other people that they can go one step beyond. You know, when I went back to school, I thought, oh my God, I haven't been in school. And wow, back in, last time I was in school was in the 90s. So when they said I had to go to school again, I went, ah, I have to go to school again? You mean because I'm an ordained minister? I've got to go through it again? I thought, oh my God, do I have to do this again? So it's had a little bit of resistance there, if you can understand this, and I felt very good. I'm not moving. <laughs> I felt, I don't know, maybe it's the universe telling me something. But I, I, I was like under stress, if you can understand that. I felt really pressured, stepping into a new church, taking classes, moving, and so forth. This past week, I can't explain it to you, but I get up, I looked out my window at the ocean, and I said, it's fine, I can do this. I have the strength to do this. I have the love of the community that I belong to, that are supporting me, because they want, Everything that I want, they want to grow, they want to be inspired on Sunday mornings. They want to be connected to a family that's loving and kind and caring. And I went, just like big weights were lifted off my shoulder. And I went through this class this week like a breeze. I was like right there. I had the answers. I knew what I was doing. I did the homework. But it was absolutely amazing when we let go. It's like turning the TV off. <laughs> turning that thinking of what was happening yesterday. And it was so funny because when I was preparing for this talk last night, I was waking up, okay, you know, am I going to remember everything? And is it going to rain tomorrow? Is the sun going to come out? And should I, should I go get a car? Should I go get a new car? And it, all these things were monkey mounting in my head. And finally I said, stop it. Stop it. And I started praying. And I fell back to sleep. So I'm just like you guys. I go through all of that stuff. And it's amazing how sometimes when we know to go back to source, how we can really relax and breathe. And breathe. Breathe into the beauty of who we are. Because we are God's creation. We are that living example. We shine our light wherever we go. And everybody we meet and we see, it's God reflecting back at us. So please join me in prayer and embody these words for yourself. So beginning in this moment, as I take a deep breath and go within, I weave a new pattern of thought through my mind. I let the thoughts of the past be done and finished. And I embrace in my mind a new idea of myself. This new idea that I embody today is that all that I do is successful. And all that I expect from myself is good. And it is very good. I accept the idea of me as a divine expression of the infinite spirit filled with love, peace, joy, and happiness. I accept the idea of me living a life filled with enthusiasm and passion for life, love, and truth. I accept the idea of me today living in financial abundance with enough to share and to spare. I accept the idea of me today as a living example of someone who has greatly blessed and it continues to be blessed with every good thing. I can imagine for myself. I can see it manifesting. And I am all ready to express the good life 
and I begin to experience it right now in this very moment. I accept and believe that I am divinely guided and directed to realize the good in all things and all people who enter my experience of life. Today is this new vision of growth, and in this new consciousness, I accept that spirit works through me, as me, for me, to make everything possible now. For I know that we are all on this journey together, heart to heart, hand to hand that we are reborn in the spirit each and every day. We are washed over and letting everything go of the past and embracing the present of knowing this today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am thankful for being the messenger, for being in a place of loving, of beauty, of sunshine. And so I know that my words is done. I know that as I release it to the universe, we all say together, Amen. And so it is. And so it is. So it's, a, it's an amazing journey that we're all on. It's a way of saying, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my life. Thank you for the animals, the flowers, the trees, the beauty, and the love that is within me. For when we do, we live. We live for now and forevermore. Thank you very much. And now we have some music. We have some music from Dallas. So thank you.
That was beautiful. Thank you. So, I need to find somebody that will come and see me to sleep at night. <laughs> and thank you for the beautiful message. I needed to hear that again. Reminders. So now it's time for our love offering. And... As you are preparing your tithes and love offerings today, think about how blessed you are, and as you're writing your check or giving your gift, send out your blessing. Mm -hmm.
that's another good part. Well, and it's all good. <laughs> good news. Jamie. We get to we get to hear we get to have Dallas do the peace song. Yeah. 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 That'll be nice. Well, I have some good news. Well, there's some bad news too. The bad news is yesterday I didn't get to do my laundry. <laughs> because I had to go to the pumpkin patch with my grandkids. <laughs> Yeah, I was getting ready to decide, well, do I want to do it now or should I wait 10 minutes? And then I got a text from my <laughs> son saying, do you want to go to Hunter's Farm with us? And it's like, who am I saying no to my son and his kids, you know? So I went to Union and went to the pumpkin patch. And the weather was nice. <laughs> and so I, that was fun. And I hadn't been in 20 years. My 33-year-old son was like a teenager when I last went. <laughs> That's my goodness. Anybody else? Candace! Yay, yeah. 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 Thank you guys for all your prayers. I, okay, so I, but I had a miracle while I was in the hospital. Uh, the chaplain came to see me and she is my second cousin, and I have no idea that I even had a second cousin, or any cousins for that matter. I've truly been estranged from my family for a long time, and, and it was just incredible. And one more thing, my brother, who is living with me, as you all know, he uh, received a letter from his daughter, and he had been estranged from her for almost five years. So he got a letter from her, so he's very happy about that. And when we, when I was, one of the times I was up to visit Candace, they all said, and we were all over by her, her, the guests for her roommate, and they all enjoyed laughing with us. And so, Tracy, some of you were here the very first time that I brought this one to the church with me. And um, I just want to let you all know it's been a, a whole year already wow. that I've had her. And she's finally starting to act like a dog. <laughs> she gets down and she eats on the floor now. And she has her own little toy box and she plays with her toys on the floor. And she even will go sleep on the couch for a little while. So she's starting to finally act like a dog. So, and I thank you all for the well wishes for her. So. For those of you who don't know, she was a rescue. And so she was in a kind of nasty, nasty little place and, and a very scary little, pale little, frail little thing. And so that's a big accomplishment. Um, I lived in this apartment for over eight years with the Burlington Housing Authority, and I had lost it after living there for eight years. This Christian family had taken me in to their home and gave me a room. So I thank this family who had taken me in and accepted me as their family, into their family. So I'm blessed that someone had came up to me and it was a co-worker and she said, you're going to come live with us. We're all Christians. So I've been there for probably going on three months um, trying to adjust living in a room. But I thank God that somebody brought me to her to be able to live with this family. And thank you all for being here for me. Okay, I've got a couple of little pieces of business we'll take care of while we're in good news. Um, we're talking about doing a holiday bazaar again. We did really well last year. We brought in some good money for the church. We've got some very talented, crafty artists and whatnot. Um, we're trying to nail down a date mid-November to early December. So if you're interested, in, I don't have sign-up sheets. I'm getting ready to go up to two weeks of training in San Diego. So uh, we're not as organized as I'd like to be. But if you're interested, please let us know. Uh, we'll let you know when we nail down the date. And being in Manette now, I think that will be a, we'll probably do it Sunday following services. 
So I think we'll be able to promote it, share it, also promote the dance that's coming up, and um, get our neighbors to come in and say hi and say hi to them. So whatever your talents might be, think about it and be in touch, and, and we're going to coordinate that and make it happen. Okay? And then I wanted to touch on, you know, Nora touched on it also about board members needed. Uh, our annual meeting is November 10th. Everyone's welcome, but we do need um, to fill a few slots. So if you're interested, please let us know. Uh, this is going to be a very exciting time with Reverend Linda here to start working toward our future. A couple of things I want to share that's very important that we came to realize as we've been starting to talk about this. Next year will be the 75th anniversary of Unity of Bremerton. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yes. That's a big deal. And then I got some mail at home from Unity Worldwide. Next year is the 100th anniversary. Wow. So wow, yeah, wow. We've got some really big, this is a good, you know, let's, like on that surfboard, let's catch this wave and let's go with it. So be thinking about that. We're going to make some good things happen. It's going to be fun. And being on the board will help you make those decisions that make it even more fun. Do you have any questions? Let me know. Thanks. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming to stand and take a hand and sing a peace song.